You and nearly every person in business in the world are paying for more energy than they're using each month. Nearly everything plugged in around your house is currently wasting energy, but it doesn't have to be that way. To explain how we got here, we have to go back to the beginning of the grid, i.e. the electrical grid, often hailed as the greatest engineering achievement of the 20th century, and for good reason. On September 4th, 1882, Thomas Edison's Pearl Street Station, the first central power plant in the U.S., began producing electricity and distributing it to several dozen customers. At the time, that electricity was mainly used to power old-timey lamps and motors. As the electric grid grew across the entire United States, and indeed power grids across the world, they didn't change all that much outside of the major shift from direct current to alternating current that happened in the early 1900s following Nikola Tesla's invention of the induction motor. However, our consumption of electricity has changed dramatically, particularly since the popularization of computers that have led to increasingly complex electronics being a part of our daily lives. Our electricity needs are no longer quite as predictable and simple as they once were. But as our household devices have gotten smarter, the electric power grid is still using analog equipment that is up to 50 years old. Doesn't it make sense that our energy distribution should evolve to meet the changes brought about by our modern energy consumption? The US national electrical grid wastes up to 70% of the energy it produces due to inefficiencies. A lot of this waste occurs before the electricity ever even reaches your home. Oftentimes, the electricity is traveling several miles over high voltage wires, wasting energy heating up the power lines and air around them. Have you ever noticed power lines drooping a bit rather than running straight across? Well, it's not all birds and gravity making that happen. It's a physical sign of this heat energy loss. When the cables heat up, they expand, which causes them to droop. The benefit of alternating current allowing us to send electricity much farther using high voltage wires is also its drawback because we can't actually use that dangerous level of voltage in our homes. That's why you may have seen one of these in your neighborhood. It's an electrical substation, and its job is to transform the electricity down to a lower voltage via the aptly named transformers to run them through the kind of power lines on wooden poles you'll see on your street. But wait, the voltage is still way too high for using safely in your home. That's what these things are for. They're also transformers, and they get the voltage down to 120 before running it to the outlets in your home. More energy is lost throughout this entire process. In fact, if you stand near one of these substations or wooden poles with transformers, you might even hear a humming noise. Guess what? That's energy loss you're hearing. So all of that is where the majority of energy loss happens. While all of this inefficiency does technically make the cost of electricity more expensive for consumers, you personally can't really do anything about it. It requires a major infrastructure overhaul of the electrical grid. But soon, there may be something you can do about the energy that's wasted after leaving your outlet. That's electricity you're actually being charged for, regardless of whether or not it's used or lost to heat. Think about it, we charge our phones by plugging them into the same outlets we plug our TVs, refrigerators, coffee machines, and every other thing in our house. But of course, all of these devices and appliances don't require the same amount of power. As popular mechanics put it, it's kind of like filling pint glasses with a fire hose. It works, but it's messy. If you're watching this video with your laptop or phone plugged in, you might even be able to feel the problem. Ever touch the part of your charger plugged into the outlet and notice it feels hot? That's the same issue of electricity being wasted as heat that we talked about earlier. Except now it's electricity you're paying for. This energy loss also manifests as fluctuations in lights or vibrations in electronics similar to the hum of transformers. Basically what's happening here is your electronics aren't being fed the precise amount of electricity they require to work. So all the extra electricity is simply being wasted. You'd think with all the advancements in technology and actual devices we use, this problem would have been solved by now. Well, it kind of has, it just hasn't caught on yet. The technology that's going to solve this problem is called Software Defined Electricity. A company called 3DFS has innovated a way to use this technology to deliver exactly as much power to every plugged-in device as it needs in the moment. No more, no less. 
This is one of 3DFS's software-defined power controllers. It's roughly the size of a microwave, but it packs a lot of power. It has two main jobs, the first being to correct and balance the electrical network by measuring electrical output in real time and distributing it with absolute precision to each device, meaning zero electricity is wasted in the process. Its other job is to report back the data it's collected on the electrical network through the cloud so you can actually open up your phone and see and control the exact energy consumption of all your devices in real time. Chris Dorfler, founder of 3DFS, likens this to an operating system for electrical networks. To me, this is a major step missing in creating the smart houses of the future we all know are coming. And it's not just cool and saving you some money on your energy bill. It's actually making your devices and electrical system in your home run better and longer. The battery in your laptop and phone will be charged to their exact needs, more than doubling their lifetime. And their predictive analytics can actually tell you when your devices might fail and why. As someone who's had to pay a couple hundred bucks to replace a dead MacBook battery, I'm thrilled for this future. As an added bonus, this system also works as a surge protector for your entire home, so a lightning strike won't fry your electronics. If software-defined electricity were to become ubiquitous, we wouldn't even need AC to DC adapters anymore. That's the brick on your laptop charger or little box on your phone charger. How exactly 3DFS accomplishes all this is perhaps even more impressive than the results. Measuring and controlling the flow of electricity in real time requires some pretty massive processing power. The software-defined power controllers process over 294 million data points every second, which is roughly 50,000 times the amount of data processed by current smart meters. In order to precisely measure electricity at the nanosecond level, 3DFS invented a new form of computing they call conveyor matrix computing. It analyzes the exact microsecond at which to add or remove current to keep the flow balanced, which is actually based on a simple principle, Kirchhoff's current law, which you might know from your science classes as the law of conservation of energy. This states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. So in a closed circuit, the total amount of energy entering and exiting the circuit amounts to zero, because in theory, it's the same amount. To achieve this, 3DFS stops excess energy from converting into vibrations or heat, which is the inefficient way our electrical system currently balances out the use of energy. When viewing the flow of electricity as a waveform, the change is stark. Here's a waveform of what electricity flow looks like now. And here's what it looks like using digital electricity. Notice how all those imperfections balanced out. So no doubt this technology will save you money on your monthly utility bill, on maintenance of your electrical system, and your electronics. But it actually extends further, having a positive impact on the electrical grid itself. By reducing the power consumption of your home, you ease the burden on the utility companies themselves, especially during peak demands. It's currently December, so imagine how much energy we'd all be saving on optimizing the electricity used by Christmas lights for the next month. Remember the substations in your neighborhood I mentioned earlier? The maintenance on those will also be reduced because they'll have to work less dealing with imbalanced power consumption from homes and businesses and returning reactive power to the grid, which is essential in avoiding neighborhood blackouts. That's millions of dollars worth of savings just in grid maintenance costs, which as a taxpayer, you're paying for anyway. So it's a win-win. For now, the main hurdle for this future to become a reality is adoption of the technology. Why would consumers want to install this in their homes if they don't even know the problem it fixes exists? At the moment, the main clients for software-defined power controllers are large-scale operations like data centers which is not surprising considering a large data center uses as much electricity as a small town. The benefits that come with installing this technology in a data center are invaluable, seeing as they are the heart and brain of any technology company. And even the US military has taken note of its potential uses. This is one of the biggest breakthroughs in energy efficiency since Nikola Tesla's lifetime. Now they just need to convince the rest of us we need it. In the comments below, tell me some of the tech woes digitized electricity could have helped you avoid to make me feel better about all the phone and computer batteries I've spent money replacing over the years. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos on what the future is bringing us. Stay awesome. And as always, I'll see you in the future.